He has devoted all his life to the trade union movement, first in Australia, then in Asia Pacific as a whole, and worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, for the former president of Uniglobal Union, please, let's welcome him with the warmth he deserves, our President George Brown. The Honourable Minister Ebrahim Patel, Comrade Ahmed Kathrada, other distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, welcome to the fourth Uni Global Union World Congress. Welcome to the great city of Cape Town. Welcome to a free and democratic and independent South Africa. Welcome to the great continent of Africa. As the opening of this Congress is showing us, we are meeting in a country which struggled for many decades to gain freedom and democracy with the victory won a mere 20 years ago. This great struggle to overcome the discriminatory policy of apartheid, which placed the vast majority of the people of South Africa into a second class of citizenship with few rights and no freedom. This struggle was led by the great leader of the African National Congress, Nelson Mandela. Mandela is without doubt one of the towering personalities of the 20th century. Incarcerated in prison for decades because he dared to struggle for freedom and democracy for his people, he was eventually released and he then led his people and the African National Congress to a great election victory in 1994. These were the first truly free elections ever held in this country. Today, as we remember these events, we remember also the sad passing of this great leader, Nelson Mandela, just 12 months ago. The legacy that he has left is one where he was gracious in victory. He did not seek revenge. He established a free and independent and democratic South Africa, able to focus on the development of its people and its natural resources, for the benefit of the nation, rather than punishing the people who had enslaved the nation for so long. Many people around the world were part of the struggle against apartheid, and so it is with great satisfaction that we meet here in Cape Town and relish the victory that was achieved after such a long and epic struggle for freedom. The struggle in South Africa in many ways epitomizes the struggle that has occurred in so many other countries on this great continent of Africa, where people had to fight to free themselves from colonial oppression in order to establish their independence. Even in recent times, we have seen the struggle of the people in a number of countries in the Middle East and North Africa, fighting once again to achieve freedom and democracy from oppressive governments in the so-called Arab Spring. And only in one country, Tunisia, has this struggle 
been truly successful to this point. Two months ago, as part of a Uni Global Union uh, delegation to Israel and the West Bank, we were able to speak to Israelis and Palestinians about their conflict. Brothers and sisters, we need a two-state solution without delay so that both nations can live in dignity and grow in a peaceful environment. Africa is an enormous continent with over one billion people. While it is often said that this is the Asia century, and this is no doubt true, it is also the century of Africa. As this population will grow, as this country, this continent will grow in population and prosperity to develop the vast natural resources that are here to be harnessed for the benefit of the African people. And our role as Uni Global Union and through our various affili affiliates on the continent is to make sure that the enormous and rapid economic development which is now taking place on this continent will be for the benefit of the 99% who struggle each day to survive and to provide for their families, rather than being for the 1% who are privileged to be able to command the levers of power and influence. Here in Africa also, we have a small number of countries that suffer the scourge of the Ebola virus, which is destroying lives and families while the world struggles to bring this sudden outbreak of disease under control. Our sympathy goes to all of those who have been affected and our solidarity is with all those people who are struggling to overcome the impact of this terrible disease. Four years ago, when we met in Nagasaki in Japan, we launched our Breaking Through strategy. This was designed to make Uni Global Union and its affiliates more effective and more capable in achieving the demands that we have for our members. Over the past four years, we have indeed achieved many of our goals. Our organising fund, which is now in its fourth year, has been an extraordinary success. Many affiliates have donated generously to the fund each year, and the money has been put to good use, organising projects in carefully selected industries and countries in order that we can grow union membership. The work of negotiating global framework agreements with multinational companies has also continued apace, with the retail company Aon being the most recent company with whom such an agreement has been reached. Internally in our structures, in our regional executives and our sector committees, we have been able to achieve a better gender balance in accordance with our policies. But perhaps the greatest single achievement in the past four years has been the signing of the Bangladesh Accord. This historic agreement between Uni Global Union and our fellow Global Union Industrial, together with 200 retail companies and brands, uh, which source their goods from the factories of Bangladesh, this agreement 
commits as signatories to improve the health and safety of the workers in the garment factories of Bangladesh. This agreement was signed in the aftermath of an extraordinary tragedy at Rana Plaza. And it is the first time in the history of the world that unions and employers are committed together to ensure the safety of working people in a developing country. Uni today is alive and vibrant all around the globe. In the past four years, I have attended the regional conferences in each of our regions, in Europe, in the Americas, in Africa, and in the Asia Pacific. In each region, I have seen the affiliates of Uni working enthusiastically to grow their membership and to achieve greater benefits for their members. Our industry sectors are alive and well, and our work focuses on the particular needs of the membership in each of those sectors. We face many challenges. The future is going to see a change in the nature of work, which we must understand and anticipate if we are to continue to be effective in representing working people. Around the globe, there is a lack of growth in wages, with only the 1% at the very top in wealth and in income continuing to improve their lives while most of the rest of humanity finds that it is stuck on stagnant incomes and on stagnant living standards. There is the increasing challenge of inequality, which has been exacerbated by the global financial crisis and by the inability of the developed world to recover adequately from this economic disaster. Precarious employment continues to grow, both in the developed world and in developing countries. And it represents a great threat to the rates of pay and the conditions of employment that we have fought so hard to establish as part of our union work. The dominant role of multinational companies in the world economy continues and these companies are able to operate increasingly freely around the globe in their own selfish interests. Tax evasion by the wealthy is a scourge around the world with both wealthy individuals and profitable companies using legal and illegal means to deny revenue to their governments and thereby increasing the taxation burden on the ordinary workers that we represent. The global financial crisis may be over, but its impact continues in many countries around the world where levels of economic growth are stagnant or in decline, investment is limited and inadequate, and workers are struggling to earn sufficient income to provide for their families. And 200 workers around the world today remain unemployed. The, these and many other challenges continue to face us as we gather for our Congress. Our theme of including you hits the right note in a world where the 1% ends up with most of the benefits of economic growth. Our Congress deals with all the critical issues of organising global agreements, the global economy, inequality, development, peace, and the future of work. On a personal note, as the introducer said, 
after more than 41 years of working for my union, union the SDA in Australia, I ceased full-time work in October, although I do continue in the honorary position of National President of that union. In view of my retirement from full-time work, it is appropriate for me to stand down as the President of Uni Global Union at this Congress. The World Executive has endorsed Anne Selin from Finland as the candidate for President at this Congress. And I hope that you will join with me in electing her as the new President for the next four year period. I have enjoyed the role of President and I have tried to visit each of the regions as part of my presidency in addition to doing my normal work for my union back at home. I want to thank all the delegates at this Congress for the support that I have been given as President. It has been a great honour for me personally, for my union, the SDA, for my country, Australia, and also for the Asia-Pacific region to have been the President of Uni over the past four years. I also want to give a special thanks to my great friend Philip Jennings, our General Secretary, for his unfailing help and support for me in my role as the President of Uni. So brothers and sisters, we have great challenges ahead of us as we can see from the papers at this Congress. Let us set our course for the future, continuing to break through in our work and including you in the process. I wish all of you a successful Congress and a new enthusiasm for the work that we do over the next four years. Thank you very much.